If you're a landscape photographer, you might have already thought of this question yourself. What sets your photos apart from a random tourist who took a photo with their smartphone? And what makes it art? Well, the answer, of course, is consistency and artistic intent. This means that in every landscape shoot that you do, in every shot that you compose, you consider visual design and how your viewer is going to appreciate the shot altogether. In this video, let's talk about three important visual design aspects that will help you be more consistent in creating your landscape photographs. First, let's talk about depth. Now, consider every landscape image as being divided into three different layers. You have your foreground, your midground, and your background. And most commonly, your background is the sky, your midground is perhaps a body of water or some mountains, and your foreground can be anything you put in front of the camera. Now in each of these layers, there are different ways to put in depth. Of course, with the sky or the background, the depth comes from the movement of the clouds or if the sun is hitting the clouds in a way that it separates it into different layers. With the midground, you can consider this with, of course, the layers coming from the mountains or perhaps some visual elements that you see in the water. But the layer in which you have most control is, of course, the foreground. Now, there is that generalization that to infuse depth into your foreground, you need an ultra-wide angle lens. Now, that is, of course, one effective way. But more than that, what's important is to actually arrange your shot or arrange your elements to create multiple layers and tell your viewers that there are more than just one layer in that particular spot. Making your composition seem deeper allows your viewers to experience more in a single photograph. They have this experience of going from one layer to another and the more you're able to create layers in all three different parts of your image will give them a more immersive experience. Remember that part of storytelling in landscape photography is actually giving your viewers that experience, giving them some sort of journey as they grow through one layer of your image to another and basically look for a resolution as they somehow end up to see the entire frame as one specific flow. The next thing you should consider is balance. Consider your frame and divide it into four quadrants. Of course, you have the upper half and the bottom half, and at the same time, you have the left and the right. And generally, you want to put equal visual weight of elements between the left half and the right half and the upper half and the bottom half. To be able to do that, you have to consider the visual weight of everything that you put in each quadrant and kind of make sure that there is something of equivalent weight on the other side. In viewing landscape images, you might have experienced looking at images that seem heavier on one side over the other. It might be right heavy or left heavy in terms of details. And at the same time, you might have already seen images that are heavier on the bottom than at the top. This means that there might be too many details on one part to the point that there's not so much on the other side. Remember that one of your goals as a landscape photographer, as a visual artist, is kind of making sure that your viewers have a pleasant experience. And one key thing, of course, is to give them a balanced image. And that means giving them satisfaction in looking at your images. They don't feel so conflicted when looking at your photos to a point that they're looking for something that might not be there. You want to achieve balance to give them that satisfaction. In doing this, you have to consider the brightness of each visual element on each side. You have to consider how much space you use and how much negative space there is because negative space actually takes a lot of visual weight. Of course, in the same sense, brighter things have a lot more visual weight. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that your images have to always be symmetrical. That's too much of a requirement. But instead, consider to put something of similar visual weight on the other side to achieve that balance. Now, the third thing you should consider is, of course, the flow. 
The flow directs the eyes of your viewers from one part to the other. This is basically you putting virtual arrows in your shot to be able to lead the eyes of your viewers and somehow direct how they experience your images. This can of course be done by using and placing visual elements that somehow point to a certain direction. This can be some actual visible lines like horizontal, diagonal, and vertical lines. Or they can be implied paths such as the flow of water, the movement of the road, the trails created by moving cars, for example. This is what you mostly have on your foreground and your midground. Now in the background, of course, you can have some clouds that are moving into a certain direction and they can also point the eyes of your viewers. For there to be an actual flow, you need all those directional elements and of course a focal point where everything will lead. This is basically that part in the movement wherein you stop looking at the individual details and you somehow kind of zoom out in your head and see the bigger picture. Now of course this flow or the visual path does not always have to be just going to one direction like going from left to right or going from up to down. For example, when you're looking at the zigzag pattern wherein your flow goes from left to right as it goes up and down and left to right and left to right again. The important thing is that most visual elements will lead to that focal point and getting to the focal point will somehow give some resolution to the journey that your viewers will take on. Now, of course, all these three visual elements are not always present every single time, but to be able to train yourself to look for these and to extract it out of a certain location, it will give you more consistency in creating more dynamic visual designs in your landscape images. And there we go. I hope you picked up a thing or two about consistency in your artistic intent and to somehow be able to compose your landscape images better. Of course, if you have any questions or any reactions to that, then the comment section is open for you and I will get to your comments as soon as I can. And if you've gotten this far into the video, thank you for watching. Of course, my name is Nico Valenzuela. I am a landscape photographer. And most of the content that I do on this channel are about landscape photography and the gear that revolves around it. So if you're into that, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell so we can get more acquainted. Thanks for watching.